This video is focused on Snowflake Streams. It is a hands-on video where you can code right along with me, but even if you aren't ready to get hands-on yet, there is still a great deal you can learn about streams from many examples in this video. So what are streams and why should you care? Streams are similar to processing queues and can be queried just like a table. Streams make it easy to grab just the new data in a table so you have more efficient processing. Streams are able to do that by taking a snapshot of all rows in a table at a point in time and only storing an offset for the source table. In that way, a stream can return the change data capture records by leveraging the versioning history. That's a quick definition of streams, but the definition doesn't give you a feel for how cool streams really are. For that, we're going to walk through some actual examples. We're going to use work from a previous video uploaded two days before this one, where we created a snow pipe. In that video, we inserted some rows into a table we created, and you can see that there are six rows here. In this video, we are going to create three different streams and run some DDL statements. We'll initially create two streams, A and B, then create another stream C later. After that, we'll replace stream B to see what the implications are. For the DDL statements, we'll insert some new rows, we'll delete a row, and then finally, we'll update a row in the table. So let's get started. First, we'll create two streams, stream A and B. Then we'll use the show command, and you can see the results of the show command on the right-hand side of the screen here. Finally, we'll use the select star command on the streams, and when we do, we'll see that there are no records yet in either of the streams. There are six records in my table, but no records in either stream because the streams only have records when a DDL statement is run on the table after the stream has been created. In this step, we'll create a new CSV file with two records like we did in the previous video and upload that file in Azure. Now we run a select star on my table and we see that we now have two more rows for a total of eight records. When we run a select star on each of the streams, we can now see that the two new records that were inserted now appear in the streams. So we're on to creating a third stream, stream C, and we'll run the show command to see all three streams. Use the select star command on each of the three streams. You'll notice that stream C has no records yet as no DDL statements have been run since the stream was created. We'll create another CSV file with four new records and upload that file in Azure. Run the select star on stream A and stream C. You'll notice that stream C, the most recent stream created, has the four new records. Stream A has a total of six records. We shouldn't be surprised, that's what we expected. Now we'll do something a bit different. First, take a look at the data in stream B by running the select star command. It shows six records, just like stream A. But if we use the create or replace stream statement to replace stream B and then run the select star command again, we'll find that there are no records. A new snapshot has been created for stream B. So as a reminder, as far as timing, stream A was first, then stream C next, and stream B was the last stream created. So what happens if we delete a row in the table? If we do that, we'll notice that stream B records include that deleted row, so stream B now has one entry. Previously, stream C had four entries, and now with the deleted row, stream C has a total of five entries. What about stream A? Interestingly, stream A had six entries before the deleted row, but now has only five entries. The row that was deleted in the table had only previously appeared in stream A, and thus the entry to record the deletion were new entries for stream C and B. Also, even though stream A and stream C both have five entries, they are not the same five entries. Stream A has five entries, 
all of them insertions. Stream C has five entries, which includes four insertions and one deletion. The reason for the difference is because stream A was created before the record for branch 49001 was inserted, while stream C was created after the record was inserted in the table. To help us further understand streams, let's take a look at the stream metadata columns. The metadata section tells us whether the row was inserted or deleted. If the row is updated, then the isUpdate column will have a value of true. And lastly, there is a unique hash key for the row ID. We've seen what happens to the streams when we insert and delete a record in the table, but what happens when we update a record? We'll change the branch name for the Brownsville branch to the Laredo branch in my table. Note that in stream A, the first stream we created, the branch name Brownsville now shows as Laredo, but the isUpdate column is false. That is because there was already an entry in the stream for loan number 49005 previously because of the timing of when we created stream A. And the same thing for stream C, which was also created at a point before the entry was inserted into the table, so that both stream C and stream A held that entry in the stream. However, that is not the case for stream B. Remember that we created stream B previously, and then we ran a delete statement for loan number 49000. So before we ran this most recent update, stream B had only one entry. When we updated Brownsville to Laredo, stream B picked up that change as an update, which is why we see true in the is update column. However, what we see is that there are two entries for the update. The first entry is where the old row is deleted, and the second entry is where the new branch name is recorded as an insert. And remember, that is because the metadata action can have only one of two values, insert or delete. Hopefully, these examples with different streams and DDL statements has made the topic a little more clear. Thanks again for watching the video. Be sure to check out my other YouTube videos. And please feel free to reach out to me on social media. Thanks so much.